On today's show, I share my family's June Disneyland trip report. This is Double Your WDW Disney World Planning Podcast. And welcome to episode number 41. I am your host, Julie Elster, creator of WRWDW.com, the Disney World planning website. And on today's show, I have some really exciting guests. I'm super thrilled to have my husband, Kurt. Howdy. And my son, Silas, with me. Hello. And if you're listening to this on the podcast, uh, we're also doing a video version of this episode as well. So I'll have a link in the show notes if you want to check it out. We're going to have video from our trip and photos and all sorts of fun stuff to go along with this interview. So you can find me on YouTube or check the show notes for the video of this episode. But on today's episode, uh, we're just going to jump right in because we just got back from a fantastic family vacation to Disneyland. And now I know quite a bit about Disney World. I know far less about Disneyland. I am not as familiar. I have been many times. I actually lived in Southern California for a while. So I've been several times to Disneyland, but it's been a lot of years since I've been. And my family's never been. My husband's never once been. Never. He, he's been to Disney World. My kids have been to Disney World, but they have never experienced Disneyland. I think the fear was that it would be lesser Disney World, and that is not the case at all. So on today's episode, I kind of want to go over our trip and talk about some of the fun things we saw at Disneyland and especially Star Wars Galaxy's Edge because that's the big thing right now and it's not yet open at Disney World. So if this gives us any sort of a sneak peek as to what we can expect at Disney World, I am really excited. So are you guys ready to talk about Disneyland? Yeah. Ask away. So there are five of us. It's my husband, myself, my oldest son, Silas, who's here. We have another son, Tanner. He's eight. Silas is 10, by the way. He turned 10 the day that we left for the trip. And then we have a daughter, Kennedy, who is two. So there were five of us. It's a big group, a lot of age differences. So the flight there, we're flying from Chicago. It's a long flight. It's, was it four hours? Yeah, it's, a, it's about four hours. It was... It was rough, but it was okay. So we got up at getting four. There. What time was the? Our flight was at six. Four hours there, and then a two-hour time difference. With the time difference, difference. So we land eight a.m. It was like eight eight thirty. Yeah, by the time we landed. Take a shuttle, rent the car. Yeah, we decided to rent a car, and this is really where Disneyland is very different. Like, how did you feel about that? Because Disney World, when we've gone, it's like Magical Express, and you're in the Disney bubble. Well, there's no great comparison between L.A. and Orlando. So you land and then discover that California taxes mean your $250 minivan is actually a $400 minivan? Yes. Yeah, it was quoted 200 something for a minivan plus a car seat. Yeah. And that and that's what they quoted me and I get there and if you're ever renting a car, question every single charge because the guy several times was like so you're bringing, we're refilling it for you, right? Which they charge like double if you have them yep. refill, like for gas. So just They were counting no. on you having no experience renting your car. Yes, that was the impression I got. And he asked me about the insurance. He's like, well, would you like the basic or the extra coverage? And I was like, I had to tell him several times, I have car insurance. I will be using my own car insurance because he kept, and was, he printed yeah. it out and it was, it had their he, coverage on there. And I was like, I don't want your coverage. He, question every charge on those car rentals. So we had to drive ourselves from LAX to Anaheim. Okay, so we checked into the hotel. Now again, with Disney World, we're used to Disney property. Our We did a split stay, but our first hotel was the Majestic Anaheim Majestic Gardens Hotel, which is a good neighbor hotel. So it's not a Disneyland hotel, but it's one that's in the area and it's Disney affiliate. So how did you feel about the hotel that we stayed at? Honestly. It was fine. Yeah. It was a little run down, but it was like, you could tell it had not been updated in 15, 20 years. Yeah. So it was a little run down, but it was clean. It was well-maintained. The common areas were up to date and nice. The restaurant was super nice. The pool was, was small, but nice and clean and pleasant. Mm -hmm. Just the room itself was a little uh, run down. Oh. And you could tell the entire thing is like addition after addition after addition because it's labor and theme. And the signage was not great. And even if you looked at a map, like there was nothing on the map to indicate where you were or where like you wanted for. to go. Like it just, 
that drove me crazy. I would say that hotel is mediocre at best. It was okay. What did you think? I, I liked it. You liked it? Having our own individual room was ah, good. Okay, so you brought up a good point. Because we stayed at this hotel and the price point was fantastic. What did you pay for it? I want to say it was 99 per room per night. Right. So it really it, like the you can't beat that price yeah. for being like next to Disneyland. You're not going to find a better deal. They we did not take advantage of the shuttle, but they do offer a free shuttle and not all the hotels in the area do. So that's also a perk. And so because of that price point, the kids were able to have their own adjoining room. So the day that we arrived was your birthday, Silas. So where did we go for your birthday? We went to Goofy's Kitchen. Kennedy loved it. There were a lot of characters. Minnie came over. Kennedy <laughs> was wearing a mini shirt. And when Minnie came over, she realized it was her. And she was super surprised. Kennedy loved it. <laughs> I think all the kids loved Goofy's. I loved Goofy's Kitchen. Goofy's Kitchen's food was surprisingly good. Yeah. So compliments to the chef. Goofy. Goofy. The coolest yeah. part of when you walk in is a what appears to be like a fully working kitchen, mm -hmm. but it's a set piece with Goofy in it actively cooking. <laughs> yes. And so our two-year-old saw this and immediately was like, Goofy, Goofy, <laughs> Goofy. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. yeah she gra she literally grabbed my arm like yeah. as I'm trying to check in for our dinner reservation. She literally grabbed my arm. It was like pulling me to see Goofy. <laughs> she was so excited. And then Goofy's always surprised to see you in his kitchen. Yes. Yeah. And that and you know we totally glossed over our afternoon because we uh, we did go to Downtown Disney before that yeah. and it was extremely hot. Yeah, so Downtown Disney, Disney Springs used to be referred to as Downtown Disney. They remodeled the whole thing. It's humongous and now it's Disney Springs at Disney World. In Disneyland it's Downtown Disney. It's not nearly as big. It's just like one stretch of restaurants and shops, which is very like it's still a lot of fun. It's very nice, but it was so hot that day. So, so hot. So. And we tried to do, because of the heat, Kennedy was just in such a terrible mood. And we tried to do this pop-up Mickey experience that they have there, which is basically an Instagram museum. Yeah. And my lovely husband here is a wonderful photographer and <laughs> was like, I'll get photos of you and, you know, we'll do all this stuff. And just the two-year-old was not having it. She just was not into it. So we rushed through it. We, we rushed it. through it. We did do it. Yes, it was. So we got every it was photo. really cool. It was a lot of fun, but we had to rush through it. It was hot. She was cranky. But then we went to Goofy's kitchen, and I was like, "Oh man, you know, once she gets to that point, it can sometimes be hard to to turn it around." But the moment she saw Goofy at Goofy's kitchen, <laughs> she was in a great mood, right? Yeah. Yeah. And did they do anything special for your birthday? And they give they gave me a little cupcake. Uh huh. And they and, sang. Yeah. Yeah, they gave yeah. me a button. Yeah, they gave you some extra, some fun extra Buttons. stuff. And Mickey came over. and her. The real winner at Goofy's Kitchen, though, is the dessert buffet. <laughs> yes. They, it's, they have more desserts, I think, than they do like regular food. At least it felt that way. Cookies and brownies and... Well, the most interesting, they, they have dessert pizzas. Yes. And actually, the creme brulee pizza was the best. It was a Bananas Foster pizza. What was the pizza and that you were shocked by? There was a peanut butter and jelly pizza. A peanut butter and jelly pizza. Horrified by <laughs> he was. He couldn't get over like, it. He was horrified. I don't, like, I don't like jelly. So I think that was that was it for that for that evening. We ended on a high note. I was like, it's not going to get any better than Goofy's Kitchen. Well, Everyone was trick. so happy. The trick we learned at Disney World with traveling with kids mm -hmm. is you don't push it. No. Like, you don't just keep going, going, going. Mm -hmm. Things are going well, so just pack it in and go to the pool. Yeah. That's, and that's what we did. Yes. We went to the pool. Yeah. It's, and you figure out what works for your kids. And like with Kennedy, it's clear that characters, she can be in the worst mood ever. The moment she sees a character, she's thrilled to death and happy as a clam. So... That throughout that it will be a theme throughout our trip is that like we then we stopped for characters because that's something we know will always make. I mean, it really makes everybody happy, but the last thing we want is a screaming two year old. All right, so the our first full day at the parks, we went to California Adventure. So what was your first impression of California Adventure? 
Do you remember when we walked up to it? What you oh, said? as soon as we walked up, I was like, oh, it's Hollywood Studios. Yeah, it does have a very similar vibe to Hollywood Studios. It's like the old school Hollywood feel when you walk in. Hollywood Studios area that you first walk into mm -hmm. in California Adventure is so small and the theme just doesn't go far enough. Yeah, it's a shame because I love the the old Hollywood theme. Yeah. I love that about Hollywood Studios. I love that about this park, but I agree. You have a great photo of like a police officer directing traffic. But that was he's and that, literally but that the was, only character. Yeah, like there were a couple of character actors playing up like the old Hollywood thing, but there just wasn't a whole lot of that. And I would have loved to see more of that. The theme just doesn't go far enough. Yeah. And then it gets muddled because like immediately... There's Guardians of the Galaxy, mm -hmm. and then Spider-Man is there for some reason. Uh, speaking of Guardians of the Galaxy, that was the first ride that we did. And so, again, toddler touring because we have to figure out how to tour with a little guy. Obviously, we can't all go on Guardians of the Galaxy. So that so cool. You two went on yeah. it, and I hung out. Tanner, our middle child, was too scared. He was nervous, which I don't blame him. What did you guys think? Silas, what was your impression of that Guardians of the Galaxy? After the ride, my legs were shaking for like 15 minutes. Okay, so you've done Tower of Terror. How did it compare to Tower of Terror? The Guardians of the Galaxy was a shorter drop, more intense than Tower of Terror. Uh -huh. I'm holding on for dear life, and I'm like, no, 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 no. You looked visibly terrified. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, he, so you were scared the whole time? Yeah. I looked at the ride photo and he's looking at you and you're like, like so <laughs> scared looking back at him. So I was like, ooh, and I saw maybe I shouldn't have convinced Silas to go on that ride. I loved it I think Okay, so you loved it, but it was terrifying. Yeah. Tower of Terror is one of my favorite rides. Yeah. It's a little campy and that's, that's what okay. I love about it though. Guardians of the Galaxy is totally works the story works, and I don't even particularly like Guardians of the Galaxy, but like the story works. They really do the story, the character service. Um, the cue for that is super cool. Just mm -hmm. tons and tons of detail. And the story for the ride is really fun. It's very engaging as far as like the ride cue stories go. Mm -hmm. This one is easily one of the best. You know what's interesting is you said that you were like, well, Tower of Terror is really campy. And I think t that though, going back to our discussion about theming, fits with like the old Hollywood feel that they had. Oh, like 100% Like that fit. Tower of Terror. Whereas Guardians or, of the Galaxy does not in the slightest bit fit yeah, the Twilight in Zone. that area. The Twilight Zone fits in that yeah. theme and Guardians of the Galaxy maybe doesn't. I did not get a chance to go on that ride just we went immediately I, there at opening and the the line was like next to nothing. But by the time you guys came out, the line had started to grow and I was like, well, let's just move on. But I will say standing outside, so one thing, I'm not a huge fan of Guardians of the Galaxy either. Just me, I know you, you love it, Silas. I love Marvel. I do enjoy the music, like just the, the oldies that they play and they had that like piping out outside yeah, the, well the little kids liked it because they were like the two of them were dancing and I was like taking videos of them dancing to the music out in front while we were waiting so that kept them busy and I enjoyed <laughs> the music as well so you guys had gone on it and we get we went there right at park opening so when you guys went out there was no line but by the time you got off I didn't really want to wait because it was just gonna be me riding like Silas was like I'm not going again I asked him like oh will you go on with me and what did you say I was like uh, if I wasn't as scared, a he's lying. Time. He was like, "Heck no!" Yeah, <laughs> it was a yes, he was yeah like, we have yeah. video of you. Yeah. <laughs> Cut to Salsa's exit interview, in which he admits to peeing his pants a little bit. <laughs> Salsa, what'd you just do? I went on the Guardians of the Galaxy breakout. And what did you think? I I peed a little bit. So I grabbed Fast Pass for Soren. And I really, I really, really wanted to do Soren on this trip because for the month of June, while we were there, they had a limited run of Soren over California. And that's what the, the ride originally was. I think they did it to uh, appease people who couldn't get into Star Wars. I think they needed to give people who weren't in Star Wars something special, something fun. And I think it worked because I, the moment I got into the parks, I grabbed Fast Pass, but when I looked later, those fast pass were gone. I mean, people were clamoring to get on that ride. And the, the line was very, just the regular standby queue was very, very long. So people were really excited 
to do Soren over California. And I'd never been on that version of Soren. So I was really excited to do it and it was absolutely beautiful. I, I loved it. Now Soren, you're not a fan of. Why aren't you a fan of Soren? I get motion sickness. <laughs> And 40 rides, nothing gives me motion sickness faster than 40. Okay, well, so I went on it with the boys, with the older kids. So we went on Soarin' Over California. And what did you think of it, Silas? I thought it was better than the Disney World one. On California Adventure, it just, like, cut. But on the Disney World one, there was, like, birds flying the, in your face. Yeah, the segways are... See, I like that better. The segways are very different. At the version in Epcot where like oh, yeah, you're flying cool and then like a bird comes at you. Yeah. And then you transition. So you think you're going to like hit something and then it transitions. Where this one, it just kind of swipes into the next cuts? one. Yeah. I'm glad I got to experience. I thought it was beautiful. I like the other version better. And both of the boys really enjoyed it as well. So uh, that you got some quality time with the baby. And now, so what did you do to keep her busy? Because I think this is important for people. Her, I had seen... Uh, we went into the gift shop across from Soren. She started saying chocolate, <laughs> chocolate. <laughs> and if she makes a demand, but she's not upset, I, we're on vacation. I'm right. going to give in to her. Right, yeah. I guess it's true of any of the she's children. She's my little guy. Yeah, fair. Like, fine, all right. If they nicely ask like, for chocolate. <laughs> I could spend $2 and make you happy. Why wouldn't I do that? Right. So uh, <laughs> just like a side note with toddler touring, I think everybody talks about like touring with children, but unless you are actually there at the parks with a two-year-old, you have no idea. And even I talk about toddler touring and I very rarely follow my own plans because a toddler is going to tell you what's up. Like they're <laughs> going to make their own demands. And you know, when you're out and about at Disney World, sometimes you just kind of have to give in and, the fear and is like, change your plans. Yeah, the fear that people have with toddlers is, well, what do we do? You don't have to worry about it. Your toddler will <laughs> always tell you exactly what they want. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, and they're not like complicated demands. They're not like, all right, I need volume three of an encyclopedia from 1996. <laughs> no, it's going to be chocolate, Cho chocolate, French fry. Yep. Like You're going to know exactly what... The, or, Spider-Man. Yes. They're going to tell you. Yeah. Just do what they want. That's what we have found works when we're at the parks because we have to, like, we have to split up. You and I very rarely get to go on anything together. We have to split up. It's just the reality of being at the parks with a toddler is that we take turns with who goes first and who goes second. And then whoever is first finds a cool spot and then texts the person, I'm at this gift shop yeah. or I'm at this, you know, quick service restaurant with air conditioning. And you find a place that... If your toddler's sleeping or in a stroller that will let you bring a stroller in because not every place will let you bring a stroller in. Yeah, so you just, you switch off and you find a cool place and take a break and take a load off and then just switch off. And I think that's the way that we have tackled it. And yeah, you're not going to accomplish as much as far as rides go, but everybody's going to be happy. And that really Don't is ultimately what, yeah, you can't that's force the mistake. every ride. And like our last trip to Disney World, I think we went on like three rides per day. Like we didn't do a lot of rides, but it was one of the best trips. And so yep. I think that has become our go-to with toddler touring. Perfect. Okay, so after that, then we went to Mickey's PhilharMagic because I thought, <laughs> yeah, I thought, yeah, they're both groaning. I thought that- I groan, I laugh. I Kennedy. I know where this is going. I thought that Kennedy would like it. I was like, this is right up her alley. She loves Donald Duck. She loves music. And she sings and dances around our house. And this is going to be great. And so as soon as we walked inside, she was like, no, no, no. Like when she saw it was a dimly lit theater, she immediately got nervous. And this has been a very, very mm -hmm. recent trend with her where she gets nervous about things. But I really, I didn't think it would be an issue with this. But it was an issue. So I didn't think twice about it. We went to see Mickey's Phil Her Magic. She spent the, she we were able to stay for the show, but she spent the whole time like clinging to me. Like she turned around, was not facing the screen, and like had her face buried in my shoulder. I thought she'd be into it and she really wasn't. What did you think of Mickey's Phil Her Magic? Did you like it? What did the older kids think? I liked it. I liked how they got into other Disney movies. All the different movies. So you liked the storyline. You thought it was yeah. fun too. No spoilers. So we went over to Pixar Pier. I thought she'd enjoy Jesse's Critter Carousel. And she kind of did, but she mostly like clung to my face the whole time. Like <laughs> all the stuff that she was. She was on the carousel 
she asked for it. So it's like, yeah, right, she, she was, saw pointing. It was like, horse, horse, horse. Yeah. So you do what she says. And we put her on the thing. She wanted to ride a pink bunny. Like we got she, her what she wanted. She started to slip a little bit and panicked. And she like, like I, I can only imagine what people like as we're going around saw. Cause she was like clinging to my face <laughs> and I'm going up and down with her like cling, like holding onto my hair and my face. So I'm like, I, she was going higher than I am tall. So I'm like on my toes trying to keep up with her. She's clinging to my face. Like it, but once she was clung to my face, she enjoyed it. So I was like, okay, <laughs> like, I guess she's yeah, having she's fun. She's... Toddlers can throw you for a loop and you just have to adjust. So after that, uh, I wanted to do Incredicoaster because I had never done it. And you were still like, I'm queasy. I, think. I was going to risk you it. You just were like, I, I don't. I wanted to do it, but it's, it's, I've not barfed in a Disney park. And I'm not ready to bark at a Disney <laughs> And you guys didn't want to do it because it goes upside down. So I went on in Credit Coaster by myself. So I was like, I'm going to try single single rider and see how that goes. And it was, it was pretty, pretty. It was faster than the regular queue, definitely. Um, it was still maybe like a 20, 25 minute wait. Like it was longer than I would have liked, but I really wanted to go on it, and I loved it. Uh, it was one of my favorite rides. After in Credit Coaster, it was like ridiculously hot. And the issue with Pixar Pier is that there is no shade. None. None at all. And so we grabbed some Mickey bars to go and we went back to the hotel for a pool. So, and I think that's just, that's probably my favorite way to like break for the afternoon. Cause it just, it gets so hot at the parks and that's when they start to get crowded. Like it, when we were there in the morning, it felt empty. Like I remember we walked in, I was like, there's nobody here. Like, this is fantastic. But by the afternoon, it had really filled out and there were a lot more people. So then we were ready to head back to the parks because we knew the sun was going to start going down about then. So we made our way back to California Adventure. We had dinner at Flo's V8 Cafe. Which I thought was really cool. Yeah, I thought it was great. For and then we saw Mater. A quick service restaurant and do the mobile ordering. The line was like out the door, but I was able to do mobile ordering while they found a table. For so just side note, do mobile ordering. For sitting down for food, we never once waited in line because we always did I, mobile ordering. I only picked places that did mobile ordering. And more and more places are getting them. At least oh, at it's a Disney majority World. at this point. At least at Disney World. Well, now at Disney World, they're adding, um, like, some of the resorts are adding it as well, which is really nice. So even if you're, you know, if you're at the pool and want to order food, order lunch, you can just put in your mobile order, go and pick it up, and, you know, head back over to the pool. It's so convenient. So we ate at Flo's V8 Cafe, and then as we're eating, I could see Mater pulling up across across from Flo's is the Cozy Cone Motel, and I, I could see out the window Mater pulling up. That I've never met one of the cars before. It's a fairly newish thing, at least at Disney World, meeting the cars. That's so cool. I thought it was weird for like a character meet. The interaction is weird. <laughs> yeah. But it's a running car like the baby thought it was funny but his like his mouth just stays open like with his big tooth he's like ah. and like his eyes are just like they just stay the way but he's talking and so she talks like, the eye, engine rocks side to side the eyes occasionally move which makes it that much weirder it was so strange and clear like the baby thought it was funny so like her and i are on one side of the car the boys are on the other side of the car and we're posing for photos with the photo pass photographer the and photographer co cropped him out yeah be the photographer cropped the boys out because they clearly had no idea what was going on like they were like what is this like the that looks describes their like, default state yeah. <laughs> but they they at least know when they're meeting a character it was in obvious in the photos that they're like what is going like what is this i, I was i still trying thanked to, mater <laughs> I, I was trying to like smile and it was i like it was cute it was fun. Like the pictures are very cute, but as far as a character meet goes, it, it was one of the stranger well, I, listen, ones. I'm an engineering dork. I like practical effects. I like when I saw rolling. I was like, oh, this thing drove. So um, then, the let's see. The here. boys went on some smaller rides, like the Mater Spin. I forget what that one's called, Ma but Mater's it was like Mater's Junkyard yeah. Spin yeah, Mater's, or Mater's something Mater's like that. Mater's Junkyard Spin. Something I like that, that yeah. Spin. Yeah, and you guys really liked that one. All right, so the plan after that was that we were going to take some some photos because there's a lot of really cool stuff to 
just to photograph. So just, you know, you were gonna take some photos and then we were gonna go. So that was the plan. But Silas was like, oh, hey look, there's Spider-Man over there. And the baby saw it and she, <laughs> Spider-Man, Spider-Man. She is obsessed with Spider-Man. And the boys, obviously you guys love Spider-Man. You're into all that's, things Marvel and. That's my favorite superhero. Yeah, that so that was a really great character meet for us. Oh, he walked up to her. Offered his hand, she took it, and then just walked off with yeah, it. Yeah, she was just gone with Spider-Man. She was like, oh, Spider-Man's here, all right. I was ya. like, all right, I'll be over here, I guess. Yeah, yeah. So, at, the, just thrilled. at the end, after the pictures, Spider-Man was like, high five, and Kennedy was turning around, and I'm like, high five Spider-Man, she, she had a uh, hand for me. Did she high-fived like, you nope. instead of Spider-Man. <laughs> yeah, and then I, she I was pointed just so over thrilled. to Spider-Man, and she... She was just so me. thrilled. She would have high-fived everyone and anyone, because she <laughs> just met Spider-Man. Her hero. The highlight of her day. That was. She talked about Spider Man the rest of the night. So we had Spider Man to... fun. Yes, yeah, Spider Man <laughs> fun. Yeah. She <laughs> yes. Yeah. So after Spider Man, we were we were pretty content. And that's we were like, all right, let's end it again on a high note and head back to the hotel. In the morning, the next day, that was the the big day for Disneyland. This was day two or full day, our second full day. And first thing in the morning, we had reservations for Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. I was so excited. So just kind of full disclosure, you and I really like Star Wars. You love Star Wars. <laughs> but your brother, who is eight, does not. He's not into Star Wars. And he's obviously... Not, he's not really into, like, action movies. Mm -hmm. I mean, he likes them, but he's not as into them as me. Right. And then obviously your sister doesn't care about Star Wars. She's so I was like, all right, this will be interesting to see how this goes with everybody's differing feelings towards Star Wars. So our reservation time was 8 a.m. to noon. So just for, in case you weren't familiar, Disneyland is brilliant with how they handled the Star Wars land opening. So for the first couple of months, it's a reservation only. They don't want people crowding the parks. They don't want people trampling anybody to get in. So in order to see the land, you have to have a reservation. So there was a window where you could make free reservations. I was lucky enough to get in on that. So like I sat on a queue online for an hour to get free reservations. The only other way to do it is if you were staying at a Disneyland hotel, and there are only three, there are three Disneyland hotels. If you were a registered guest at a Disneyland hotel, your entire party is eligible for a reservation. So we got the free reservation for that day, and then we ended up doing a split stay. So we did get a second reservation. So we'll get to that in, in a few minutes. But so Why is it called a split stay? Because we stayed at two hotels. Why did you say we stayed at two hotels? Because it's called a split stay. Like, why does that <laughs> that's, get its own buzzword? Because that's what it's called. A split it, stay? Yes, that is what it it's called. It makes it sound cool. That is what it's called. It is called a split stay. Check this out. I changed hotels. You ever do a split rental car? Where you take no. the rental car back why and a second rental car? Why? But nobody would do Just that. Just switch it up, get two different rental no cars? No one would do that. I have no what idea. What if I what can't decide between red and blue? That's I ridiculous. I want a coupe and a sedan. What's happening? Okay, so we had our free reservation and the reservation is, I mean, it's very, they're strict about it. So we had our reservation times. I was emailed a confirmation with a QR code. And so our reservation time was 8 a.m. to noon and you can check in two hours before your reservation time. So we could have gotten to the park as early as 6 a.m. I'm glad we didn't get there that early. We ended up getting there, it's like what, like seven-ish, I think is when we got to the park. We got to the park at 7. And we checked in by like 7.15. So you have to check in. They And they really, they take it very, very seriously. I had to show my um, reservation on my phone with the code. I had to show my ID. It had to match my ticket. Like they really were very thorough because they don't want people selling these reservations and they don't want people sneaking in. They don't want that anyone taking you, advantage. That just gets you a wristband. At which yes. point someone mm -hmm. else then has to activate the wristband via QR code. Yeah. And then to get into the park, they have to scan the wristband. Yes. Yeah. So it's literally more secure than the security theater happening at the airport. Mm -hmm. But so we checked in. Because we were the first reservation of the day, they escorted us over to the land. Otherwise, people would just show up at their reservation time. But they escorted us over to the land. And at 8 a.m., we got to experience Galaxy's Edge. Dude, so sick. Dude, so sick. <laughs> Silas, so sick. do you agree? That was the best park out of Disney World and Disneyland combined as the best park. That's quite an endorsement. All right, so... No, I agree. They yeah. 100%. If the devil's in the details, nothing is more detailed 
than this park. They nailed They've it. They've not built anything like this you, before. It's you phenomenal. You got like a million pictures. Yeah, he took because there were a million things. There are so of. many yeah. things to see. And I'm sure I still miss things. Yeah, and this there was so much and so much detail. It's unreal. This is when it actually was beneficial for us to like have to split up with the baby. Is that like we could like do one Cover thing? More ground. Yeah. Yes. And so, like, I got in line to, you took the boys on a ride, and I was like, I'm going to get in line to have a photo pass photo taken with me in front of the Millennium Falcon. And then I'm going to go check out the food situation. And so then you did the ride, and then I did the ride, and then you were checking out where characters were meeting over at where Rise of the Resistance, which is the ride that's not open yet. But because it's not open, there was nobody there. So you were able to see all these characters and like these like ships and stuff that they There's have There's literally out. nobody over there. Yeah, it was incredible. So it's like the majority of it is a um, an Empire First Order controlled city. And then there's an outpost and that's like similar to Tatooine or where Rey is from. And when you go over there, that's where the new ride will be. And the queue is there, but the... You can't get on yeah, it. Yeah, they have people standing there to like yeah. keep you away from trying to like get into the queue. But a cast member told me it would be open in November. Ooh, that's okay. exciting. All of the cast members are in character as yes. residents of this planet. Like when I walked too far, they said, Oh, if you go this way, it will take you off planet to Critter Country or whatever the heck that thing's called. <laughs> I yeah, it was Critter Country. I was dressed I was dressed as a droid and at <laughs> one point I was in line to try and get into the cantina, which we couldn't. That was the only thing that was like so busy we couldn't do was the cantina. But anyway, when I was in line to try and get in, they told me because I was dressed as a droid, they're like, we don't serve your kind here. She's like, we don't serve droids. Like they were very much in character and she had some stank on it. Like she was like in well, serious all, character, like we don't serve your kind droid. They greet you with bright suns, traveler, mm -hmm. and they tell you safe travels instead of goodbye. They don't talk about dollars, everything. Oh, that'll be 18 credits. It's credits. I have two little stories to tell. All right, what are your stories? That stormtroopers walked up to you and said, can I see your ID? Back to how serious the IDs were, stuff mm -hmm. were to be sure they you still have it on or Oh sneak yeah, in the stormtroopers. The stormtroopers were, and I had heard that ahead of time that the stormtroopers were making sure that everybody's IDs were on and that the stormtroopers would escort you out. Yes, yeah. The stormtroopers approach people. They go around. They hassle people. The stormtroopers are the best part. What did you think of the ride, Silas? That was the. That was one of the best rides. So you loved it. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about it. What kind of ride was it? There's a pilot, there's a gunner, and an engineer. So you get on the ride, so you're on the Millennium Falcon, then you're given a role to yeah. play on the ship. Yeah. And then what do you do? Well, there are buttons that flash when the button lights up. You have to press it, press it. There's like switches that you... So the Millennium Falcon ride is a, literally a Millennium Falcon flight simulator. That's the coolest part about it. It's not 4D. And I have no idea how they manage this screen, but it's like the full cockpit. It looks 3D, but you don't need glasses. There are six seats in it. When you show up to the ride, when you get all the way up in the ride queue, and it's got this really phenomenal animatronic setup that's like on the level of the stuff they did for Navi River Journey, just amazing. So you sit down and essentially like the pilot is on, all three jobs are just like a reaction time thing, like a quick, just one series of quick time events. Um, the front two pilots are steering left, right, and up, down. The engineer, that's really the most fun, is you have a series of switches and buttons, and as they flash, you have to hit them as quickly as possible. And I didn't get to do the, um, the gunner, and that one was a little confusing because the woman in front of me said, oh, I've never done this before, and they said, okay, well, you're on automatic mode then. So I guess there's two modes for it. That's were, what was yeah, confusing. Yeah, there were, because I didn't know either, and I so I was like automatic. But then it was just one button, and then I had wished that I had done yeah. manual. Because well, how hard then I was like, been? I'm just hitting one button over and over again. Yeah. And then I'm watching in front of me, because I was a gunner. I'm watching in front of me the pilot, and I was like, well, her job looks more fun. Like, yes. she's got <laughs> levers and other buttons, and then they're like, you know, pull this and do that. And I was like, I wanted, none of us got to be pilot. We that, were all that, either gunner or engineer. That sucked, but it was still fun being the gunner and the engineer. Yeah, I mean, it was still a lot of fun. I just, had I, no, I only got to do it once. The boys got to do it twice. Had I known, 
I would not have done, I would have done manual and not automatic. The first time I went on, there was a kid, I was watching what he was doing, it was so cool, and then I got to be the gunner, I was just pressing one button. Yeah. This one's not, like, not having the glasses, and it being, like, it's less rough than, like, Star Tours. This one, I did not have problems with I motion sickness. I was surprised, I was concerned that you were going to come no. off and be like, Ugh, and you weren't at all, you were no, totally the, the fine. the 4D really exacerbates you were, it. You were casual as soon as you got out, you were, like, walking was like, normally, not, yeah. not feeling sick. Yeah, no issues. So I that, so cool. after the ride, then, we did a little more exploring, and then I had to try the blue milk and the green milk. <laughs> It's in the first movie. It's when he's the still with uh, his aunt and uncle. Mm, yes, yeah. And so he drinks blue milk. Yeah. So they have the blue milk, and everybody was super excited about the blue milk. Um, but it's not actually milk. It's plant-based milk. It just tastes like something you get at Jamba uh, Juice. It, it tastes just like Jamba Juice. It was okay. For, That's, well, for, Jamba Juice is just okay. For $8, I, and here's... And this seems to be just like the general feeling from everybody that I've heard about it is that they're like, I'm glad I tried it. I wouldn't get it again. Well, here's okay. Part of it, the issue is presentation. Well, I think it's because you want, like, you just want to see that it's blue milk. Like, I don't have a problem with the presentation. I have a problem everything with the taste else, and the price. The detail on everything else was amazing. Down to Coke made special uh, glow bottle. The, I just was like, because there were five of us and we ordered one of each to try them. And we ended up throwing half of them away. Like, between five of us, we couldn't finish those. And I think that's, like, the general feeling about them. So it's, like, it's fun to try, and you take the photo. I liked the blue one better. It was... I like the green one better. It was a little sweeter, I think, they which is why I liked it. They taste very similar. I don't know. It's fine. It was okay. And then I think at that, we were getting close... To, it was close to, like, 11, or it was maybe right around 11 at that point. So we knew we had a reservation the next day. So I was like, before it gets too hot and before the park gets too crowded, why don't we head out? So we made our way over to Fantasyland. I will say it's interesting that Star Wars Land ended up being built in Disneyland versus California Adventure. It feels very weird to leave. It would make way more sense and yeah. fit way better in California yeah, Adventure. Yeah, it, it didn't feel like it fit as well. I assume this is just an issue of space. It must be. This is where they had space. It must be. It, it, just... was, it was like in a, like a desert Please. Then you're suddenly in Fantasyland. Yeah. I don't know. It was it was a weird transition then to move into Fantasyland and like be at Dumbo. So it was a little strange. But so you know, our toddler had nothing to do at Galaxy's Edge, and that would be maybe my one criticism is other than meeting Chewie at one point, like there was really like she pointed at some droids because she likes robots. <laughs> There's really not a whole lot for little kids there. So they do do rider switch. But we were just swapping it because the lines weren't long enough. It really, like, it didn't matter, but... I was disappointed we never got to do the cantina. Yeah. Because even though you stood in line, which literally wrapped around a majority of the park and put in the reservation, you never yeah, got Yeah, yeah, it just it didn't work out. But that was the one thing we didn't get a chance to do. Anyway, so we moved over to Fantasyland. And again, the baby was, like, pointing at stuff. She's pointing at Dumbo. She really wanted to go on the carousel. And I was like, all right, if I'm there... On the carousel. Yeah, the carousel's fine. I didn't think twice about the carousel. I'm like, she'll be fine. She can just hold on to me. We get on the carousel. She starts we guessed wrong. shrieking. Oh, my God. Like, she lost it. And her, her when something's very upsetting to her, it's all done. So all she's done, yeah. shrieking, all done. Yeah. All done. <laughs> yeah. yeah heartbreaking and a little funny. Yeah. It was like 90% it was of like, heartbreaking, 10% funny. It was yeah. Like because she's upset at a carousel. It's funny now. Like, after the at the time, it was not funny. I, I was at the horse next to them. I was like, I was like sad laughing. I'm like, oh. Yeah, poor baby. So at that point, you and I came to the decision. We were like, all right, we're not putting her on any ride. So this completely changed again the way that I'd planned to tour the parks. Because I was like, it's still early enough where we can do some Fantasyland, some of the dark rides, which in the past she's enjoyed. At Disney World, she has enjoyed the dark. She thought Haunted Mansion was cool. Yeah. She thought Navi River Journey was we cool. Went on, we've gone on Peter Pan. We've gone on all sorts of stuff, like dark rides where like she could just sit in my lap. But that's when she was one. Yeah. Now she's two. Now she's two. She's, she's a completely different little <laughs> kid now. But yes, yeah, so they, it, so I was like, all right, we're, we have to change this. So the wait for Dumbo was too long. There were some dark rides like I went on. The wait for Dumbo was 45 minutes. It was minutes. 45 minutes at that point. Who waits 45 minutes for Dumbo? So ask my mom when I was a kid. I would shriek and shriek 
to go on Dumbo. Dumbo, Dumbo, make everybody wait, you know, 90 minutes to go on Dumbo in 100 degree Orlando heat. So I would wait for Dumbo. So we ended up skipping Dumbo, but I I went on, I think, Pinocchio with just you. No, but other that was, than that, I was that like, was we creepy. have to, we have to, yeah, it was a little creepy. We have to move out of Fantasyland because she's not going to go on anything and the wait times were starting to creep up at that point. So we grabbed a fast pass for Indiana Jones which is, that ride was one of my favorite, and it had been years since I've been at the park, but you know I've talked about Indiana Jones quite a bit, because it's one of my favorite rides. So that was the first one I went to for the Fast Pass was Indiana Jones. So again, we split off, um, I can't remember who went first on that, but we found like a cool, a cool restaurant first. to, to kind of hang out with the baby, got some snacks, and then I went on Indiana Jones with Silas. So this was your first experience with Indiana Jones. What did you think? I loved it, but... Was it scary? Yeah. The first time I'm like, I didn't know what to expect. So were you surprised that like with all the rocking and the jostling and yeah, it's, yeah. it's crazy. It's a lot of fun. And we were concerned when we got off the ride that Tanner, our middle child, wouldn't be up for it, but you went with him. What did what did you and Tanner think? He in the ride, he was mildly nervous. In the line, the queue, he was mildly nervous, but not bad. So was um, I. And <laughs> then we got on the ride, and as soon as it started moving, he immediately loved it. Yeah, <laughs> like it's there's it's clearly enough like comic fun mm -hmm. that he understood that it wasn't going to be and scary. And they've seen the movies, the Indiana Jones, the boys yeah. have seen those movies. So even if you're just vaguely familiar <laughs> with like them, I. I loved Indiana Jones. I love the ride, and I love all things practical effects. I'm a big Imagineering dork. The ride vehicle for this is one of the coolest things they've ever built. So after Indiana Jones, uh, we we were all sufficiently cooled off because the group waiting was in a restaurant with the toddler. We were in a nice air conditioned ride, so we had cooled off. So we made our way over to Haunted Mansion because that is a a family favorite for us. Is Haunted Mansion. So we grabbed some ice cream bars and made our way over to Haunted Mansion. So we got to Haunted Mansion, got into the elevator, the elevator goes down, and then we're just sitting there. And the door has not opened, and we're just sitting there. And so we spent like a full several minutes just sitting, hanging out in the elevator. In the stretching, at, yeah. in the stretching room. And then finally the thing opens, and same thing happens. And then you discover like... This is how we discover, oh, there's two of these stretching rooms next to each other because they're both open and we're all just hanging out because the ride has broken down. Mm -hmm. We move forward, we're in the queue, and it, it was kind of nice just because I get to hang out and stare at and look for like every little detail in that in the queue. And there really there wasn't a ton. I didn't find anything I hadn't seen already. And then we get on the thing, the ride starts and turns and just before it starts the ride, it stops. Mm -hmm. And we're just sitting there. And it was kind of like, you could see the people in front of us were already into the start of the ride. They start turning on their flashlights on their phones. Yeah. And like looking around. I would have killed to have Haunted Mansion break down in the middle of the ride so that I could look around with oh, a flashlight. You know what? I'd, I, I went on after you and it broke down several times for us as well in the middle of the ride. And I didn't think to, I was, I was like, I wonder if I could take pictures, but it's too, like, you really can't in that particular ride. So I was like, eh. No, but you it didn't, around. It didn't, it didn't even it's... occur to me to, like, use a flashlight to see. Yeah. And then yeah. at that point, it's just, it completed the ride. Yeah. We, it stopped uh, at the graveyard part where, the, where they were all singing this song. It was so cool. Yeah, it stopped. It and like, we sat there for quite a while and just watched I, them. I liked it. Though. Yeah, it was. It's sometimes it can be fun when a ride breaks down. It depends on the ride that you're yeah. on, but like it can be. It the dark like, rides can be fun. The slow dark rides with like a lot of details. Yeah, are always the good ones to break down. Yeah. So after that, then it was hot, and I think we were like we should start heading out. So we, that was day two. That was the hottest day. Yeah, that was by far the hottest day. So we stopped and and uh, met a few characters on the way out. Like we saw Pluto and. But other than that, it was like we need to just make our way to the exit at that point. So yeah. we went back for another Get pool, pool break. Yes. Tia Joe's. We ate yeah. Tortilla Joe's. The which was really good. And reasonably priced. Very good sit-down restaurant. Yeah. It was, the kids enjoyed it. A guy came by fed. and made 
balloon Mickey and Minnie for the kids. We fed five people, got uh, margaritas, and it was a hundred bucks. Yeah, ninety really, really ninety nine dollars exactly for, for five people. And it's alcohol yeah. and it's a and alcohol. Restaurant. Yeah, it was. It was very so we walked around, we did some souvenir shopping, as you can see our lovely Disneyland right. attire that we got. This, this from is Disneyland. Disneyland. Disney. Yes. I just, I just yes, World of I, I love World of Disney. Yeah, World of Disney was really cool. I don't know what the do they have the equivalent in Disney Springs? It's, yeah, World of Disney. Oh really? Yeah, yeah. I guess I wasn't paying attention. Yes, no. Disney Springs is like overwhelming. There's so much. so much at Disney Springs versus downtown Disney. I appreciate that about Disney. downtown Disney. Yeah, yes. Is it's it's a much more curated selection of yes. things. Yes. Yes, and it's nice because it's all right there. So the entrances to the parks are back to back, and then, like, so it's you know Disneyland, California Adventure, and then down like the middle, it's almost like a T. Yeah. <laughs> down the middle is Downtown Disney, so it's and it's if you're so staying convenient. At, if you're a baller and you stay at the Grand Californian, you don't even have to go through security. You do, but it's like in the hotel. Oh. Yeah, and they, the Grand Californian, which we didn't stay there, but that particular hotel has a private entrance into Cars Land. <laughs> so, I mean, and you can, if you're a guest at any of the Disneyland hotels, you can use it. They just ask for a room key to, to validate that you are a Disneyland resort guest. Well, but we do that. Well, the reason we didn't do that, so the next morning we got up super early to check into Disneyland Hotel. And the reason we didn't do that was because we had Star Wars Land reservations. Okay. That's why. So we went to bed that night after we ate dinner and did our souvenir shopping. We went back to the hotel, went to bed. We got up super early because we had to check in. You have to check into your hotel before you get your hotel Star Wars reservation. Again, that high security. Yes, yes. You ha Because they don't want you getting your Star Wars Land reservation and then canceling your hotel reservation. So if you got a reservation that way, you have to be checked in. So we checked in like super early in the morning. It was like six or six thirty, and I'm in. There was already a line to check in at Disneyland Hotel, but that hotel is amazing. Again, the details. Very pleasant. In the lobby, Extremely there are pleasant. teacup chairs, like the teacup I rides. That. Yeah, yeah, they're they're right in the lobby, and characters will run through the lobby. I was hoping to see some. We didn't this time, but well, I was outside. Characters in the car. do run through. The valet directs traffic with a giant Mickey hand. I did not catch that. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's so cute. Yeah, so there's just so much detail, and it's such a beautiful hotel. But so we had to check in, and then we ran through downtown Disney. We got some breakfast really quickly, and then made Earl our way. Earl's Sandwich. Earl's Sandwich, Sandwich, which is also in Disney Springs, and it's good for breakfast, lunch, love, dinner. Or, I don't love Earl's Sandwich for lunch. Really? I, for their I breakfast like sandwich, I loved. Yeah, the, I, yeah, I like it for any meal. You can Then we just continued on through downtown Disney to the park entrance. And this time we weren't in as much of a hurry because we'd already seen Star Wars Land, so we made well, our way over. Well, and we knew that getting there right at op before the park opens, unless you were there like at 5 a.m., isn't saving you much because you're just in that line. Yeah, if you're at, if you're there for the opening reservation, like you have to be escorted to the land anyway. So and I have video of the crush of people. It's crazy. So it's harder to like. I get like if you want to do the cantina, you have to be front of the line. Like so, I I get that. If cantina's priority, get to the front of the line. It doesn't matter what time your reservation is. You were there at open, and you did not make it. Yeah. For the yeah. Cantina. So get there super early, get right in line, and get to the front of the line to enter the land would be my suggestion. But everything, like the lines for the ride were totally reasonable, getting food, like the I didn't Millennium have to wait. Falcon wait was typically 20 to 30 minutes. It was longer the second day, but like if we, had not, if we had not gone on it already, I would have been like, oh yeah, that's fine. Like I'll wait 40 minutes. But we had already gone on it, so I was like, I don't want to wait 40 minutes. I want to hit other parts of the park. But we got food very quickly. We got drinks very quickly. So we were able to get breakfast, and we just went to Dock, Docking Bay 7, I think it's called. And they had an awesome breakfast. And it's it's fun because it's it's regular food. It's eggs and it was, potatoes and sausage. Yeah, it was potato, but sausage, the way it's served. Egg. And mushrooms. The presentation, like they put coloring in the eggs so they were purple, or not the eggs, the potatoes so they're purple. And they clearly used some mold for the eggs. The egg was just it, was, shape. it was an odd shape. And but the food was delicious. It was it was good. I got it very quickly. So I think I had like mugu juice or something like that, which was very it was like a 
an assortment of, of fruit juices mixed together, which I thought it was delicious. Yeah, I had one that was delicious. like tea and fruit juice that was I, very good. I can't remember if it was called like Moog juice or something like that. It was it was very, very good. The baby, I think, stole it because she liked it as well. So it's so that second day we were able to meet more characters. Like we were just walking around um, and Ray walked up to she us. She approached us. I didn't even see her. Like I was looking the other way and, and she starts talking to our daughter and asking her if she's... If she's part of the resistance and it was just I was like oh and and, and we started she, chatting yeah. and it was a lot of fun we had to take a picture and she was like yes I will take a face scan I just I cannot get over how flawless this reservation system was at Disneyland so I think after that we like we again we took more photos we took some family photos in front of the Millennium Falcon because we didn't get to do that the first day and then I think after that, we were like, all right, we know we're not getting into the cantina. So we well, decided to, to call it a morning at Star Wars. So then we went over to Fantasyland. We were going to try Fantasyland again because Tanner had his heart set on Dumbo. So this time when we went over there, the wait was only like five to ten minutes. And I was like, I'm going to risk it and take the baby on, on the ride. So we got in line. You went with Tanner. I went with <laughs> Kennedy. And it was mostly a success. She got a little scared. But, uh, she was okay. But she, yeah. She was she, nervous. Yeah. She clearly got nervous. Yeah, but she mostly, like, like, she at first was big smiles and got a little nervous when it started moving. But then she calmed down and enjoyed that one. So we got to take advantage of Dumbo. Uh, what else? We Oh, we did Indiana Jones again because that was a favorite. Yep. That was, you really wanted to do that one again, right? Both you and your brother <laughs> yeah. were like. That was really, really fun. Yeah, so we did Indiana Jones again. Then I uh, lost my fanny pack. Don't lose anything at Disneyland because it is quite the ordeal getting it back. Like, that's why I don't carry a purse at the parks. I wear a fanny pack so that I don't leave it behind. But then the moment I take it off, I ended up leaving it behind. A cast member grabbed it. And when I was looking for it later, she saw me frantically looking. It was like, you have to go to uh, Main Street and go to City Hall. So I'm like, okay, no big deal. So I walk over to City Hall, and you were in a gift shop with the kids and the air conditioning. And I had to stand in line. It was probably the longest line that I stood in our whole time at I Disneyland thought, was freaking City Hall for the Lost and Found. I thought, oh, I'll just sit down with the kids a little bit. It was a half an hour. Yeah, it was the longest line that I stood in. I was like, I'm just here. I, was, I thought for sure I'm like, I'm standing in the wrong line. I thought for sure. I was like, there's... Was everyone there for Lost and Found? No, it's like very... Like, people have issues with their tickets or like they... So it's just like a customer service yes, desk? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I was like, there's no... I was like, they're just going to be like, oh, no, you just need to go over there. I thought for sure. But no, she was like, here's your number. We'll call you when it's your time. Finally, they call me and I go in and the guy, ha like, he has the fanny pack but then he has to go through it and take inventory of everything that's in the fanny pack, and I have to sign off on everything. And so it was just, the, it was a big ordeal. So don't take your fanny packs off, I guess is the lesson. Yeah, and because of it, we missed Space Mountain, which was kind of a bummer, but we were in Tomorrowland, or that's where we were headed. So we did the Buzz Lightyear ride, which was fun. So um, then, we, then we went over to Toontown after that. Toontown is surprisingly cool. It's very cute and very fun. And Disney World does not have anything like Toontown. So I enjoyed it. The baby loved it, which is why I wanted to go over there because this I was obviously I was like, this is right up her alley. It's the really the only place where you can find anything Roger Rabbit anymore. Yeah. So the boys, you guys went on like a mini there, roller coaster. Yeah, and was, you liked that, right? I loved it. Tanner loved it. Yeah, and so while you were doing that, again toddler air conditioning we went in to meet mickey because mickey has a house over there in toontown which is also very cool yes it was like you walk in and it's a house but it's very cartoony everything looks like a cartoon come to life it so, looks like a small house but it's actually pretty huge it's big yeah so we walked in there and they've got cartoons playing so like if you have to stand in line it was all very convenient we were in air conditioning there was cartoons and then the baby like lost her mind because she got to meet Mickey Mouse. She's thrilled. Which was, it was one of the cutest things I've ever, like her interactions with characters are just one of my favorite things ever, just in general. And yeah, Toontown, not a lot of shade. No, again, not a lot of shade in Toontown. And I really wanted to do uh, Small World, which is right there, but it just, the cue for that was outside and it was like 90 at that point. So we were like, let's get lunch. And it also suddenly hit a long wait. 
Yeah, I wonder if it had broken down, which is entirely possible, because it was said five minute ride, and then suddenly it, it shot up. So that would be my guess. So we went over to Red Rose Tavern, which, because mobile ordering is the best thing ever, everybody was able to eat and cool off again. So we had a fast pass for Matterhorn, and I, it's like that was a great way to just kind of to, to end things. It's a ride you can't get at Disney World. It's a ride, you know, the boys have never been on, so. I was terrified in line. I'm like, I'm not sure if I wanted to do this. And I was on the ride. I'm like, this I think awesome. that, that's how your experience with any and all rides goes. Yeah, both. Yeah. You go, I'm terrified mm -hmm. of this because I don't know what it is. Then yeah. you ride it and go, wow, that was super fun. Let's go again. Yeah, both mm -hmm. you and your brother are See like that. See what happens when you try things? <laughs> you were both nervous, and then you tried it, and you both were like, that's one of my favorites. So we ended the day at the parks with Matterhorn, which is do, nice because you what, get splashed. Do you know the, what's the Matterhorn trivia? There is a basketball court hidden inside the Matterhorn for when cast members have to like do performances up on the mountain. So it's something to like keep them busy. There's a an honest to god basketball court inside there, inside the ride, inside the mountain. I bet you know that wasn't the trivia I was going for. What's the trivia you were going for? It's the first steel roller coaster. Oh. The plans for the ride, they said this is impossible. And Walt said, figure it out. My trivia is more fun. And so they that <laughs> all all steel roller coasters are descendant of Matterhorn. So you got two pieces of there Matterhorn trivia in this episode. You're welcome. But so after that, we were like, all right, we're calling it a day. We're going to yeah, head out of the put park. Our head. Yeah, so we made our way out of the park, which was sad because I knew we weren't going to be going back that evening. We uh, went back to Disneyland Hotel. Their pool is amazing. So Disneyland Hotel, not the most budget-friendly hotel. Like one, we all were in one room at this particular hotel versus the previous hotel where we had two rooms, That's and nice it cost room. more per night. It was expensive. Um, so, I mean, if it's something that's in your budget, I recommend it. And even if you do what we did and, like, stay somewhere less expensive, but then have one or two nights there, like, if that's something you can swing, I would do it. Like, it's... I it's, would save that for the end, though, because you're not going to want to go back to the, the lesser hotel. Yeah. The pool was really great. You get the Disney service. There's... Um, well, it's convenient. Yes, it's you can walk. You get perks when you stay at the Disney hotels. So there's just there's so much, and it's it's a ton of fun, and it's a beautiful hotel, and the pool was great. So we did the pool, and then we went back over to Downtown Disney for dinner, and we did um, what's it called the Black Tap Black Tap Black Tap Anaheim for the crazy shakes with like a whole giant piece of cake on top of your milkshake. So we did burgers and shakes and a little and more wings shopping. Were very good. Wings, yeah. What did you think of the food? The milkshake was amazing. Excellent. So that was it. That was our. We had milkshakes. We went back to the room. We went to bed, and then the next morning we had an early flight. Which, again, traveling with the toddlers not always super fun, but we made the best of it. I think. There was we had a layover. There was a delay, so that wasn't great. But she did really well. She fell asleep on the second flight, and. And, you know, she's two, so she's a little crabby. But we made it. We survived. We made it home. Did everybody have a great trip? Yeah. Yeah. That was yeah. Really fun. I was, wish we'd stayed one day longer. Me too. Me yeah. too. That's... We I, were in the park three days. We should have done four days. I agree. I, I really, really wish that we had done an extra day. I wanted to do Matterhorn at least one more time. I know. I felt bad. You guys were begging me to do Matterhorn again. And I was like, we don't have the time. We have to go. So did you, your fear was that it would be lesser Disney World. How did you feel after, like, if you got home and processed everything? So it certainly is smaller. But in many ways, because it's smaller, it's more convenient. It's cheaper which is always a plus, and it was no less fun. Yeah. It is different. It is smaller. It's no less fun at all. Yeah. I mean, it's great. Yeah. I loved it. It was just as fun as the Disney World experience. Okay. So you both agree, just as fun as Disney World. I think if, you, if you're looking for being able to do it on more of a budget, you have more options because you don't have to stay at a Disney World or Disneyland hotel. There are more options that are very, very convenient. If you have a time crunch, 
be, you can get more done because mm-hmm. it's it is much more convenient. You just get go from you can walk, walk from your hotel to both parks. You don't have to like think like what bus do I have to take and then I transfer here and then I do this and that. Yeah, no, there's none of that. You just walk to where you're going. If and, Disney World feels overwhelming to you, and the first time we went, it did feel overwhelming mm-hmm. to me, then Disneyland may be a better option for you. I agree. So, yeah, I liked it. I liked it a lot. I'm glad we did it. I, you know, I liked it because I wish we we'd stayed a day longer. Mm-hmm. Styles, what was your favorite experience at Disneyland? The Star Wars was the best. Star Wars was the best? Yeah. I really liked how they made the Millennium Falcon. If you look like at the close to the bottom, you can actually see uh, the stairs. See like the details mm. on the yeah. Millennium Falcon. And yeah, oh, you saw like the Falcon stairs, the entrance? Yeah. Replica. And I... Uh, I looked at the side and I saw like a little bit added inside of it Mm -hmm. and it was really cool. Excellent. Yeah, the details on the Millennium Falcon were really great. What was your favorite character meet, Silas? Spider-Man. Spider-Man. I think they all like, the kids loved Spider-Man. What was your favorite character meet, Mommy? Ooh. (laughs) um, I liked liked being at uh, uh, Goofy's Kitchen. The characters at Goofy's Kitchen were very fun and sweet. Like our baby was literally trying to climb uh, over the uh, oh, yeah. the she back of leaving. the seat. Like we were in a booth and there was a big cutout in the booth and she was trying to like jam herself <laughs> through the cutout to That's escape so to get to, to Pluto. Meet, to meet the characters, yeah. She saw Pluto. Yeah, and the guy, <laughs> there was like a waiter or somebody there and he was like, oh my God. And he ran over to get the character so she'd stop. So <laughs> he didn't want her falling through the booth. Yeah, what about uh, you? What was your favorite character interaction? Ray was pretty cool because it caught me by surprise. Yeah. I just turned around and suddenly Ray is introducing mm-hmm. herself to that me. That was really neat. Yeah. yeah that yeah, was it, neat. It's a tie for me, uh, Spider-Man and Ray. And Ray, yeah. All right, so <laughs> should we... We've got trips to Disney World planned. Should we go back to Disneyland? I'd rather be at Disney World because <clears throat> that's how this whole thing started be- it inspired you to to create this job and podcast mm-hmm. this stuff and it's way bigger and it has a lot of more rides okay all right and so we can talk about some more all right so i think the the vote is in and we're disney world people we like and appreciate disneyland we had a lot of fun at disneyland but we're disney world people is what i'm hearing does that does that sound accurate yes okay is there anything else you guys want to share before we, this before we sign is, off? Is this your first vlog? Yeah. Good We're, job. Yeah, you did good. Thank you guys for taking time out of our busy evening to talk Disney with me. So special thanks to my husband back there and my son for taking the time to talk Disney with me. If you guys want to be considered for a trip report, uh, feel free to reach out. You can find me on the website. There's a link in the show notes. Or you can find me on social media. I'm most active on Facebook and Instagram. You can follow me along there for more Disney fun and articles and tips and everything else Disney World. Until next time, I will see you guys at the parks.